good morning students today we learn about the factors affecting temperature it is also a part of insulation and a very vital topic so today we are going to focus on the five basic factors which affect the temperature of the earth now latitudes the spherical shape of the earth causes variation in the angle of incidence of the sun's rays in general the temperature decreases as we move from the equator towards the poles now this is because the midday sun is almost overhead within the tropics throughout the year the vertical or direct rays of the sun pass through less atmosphere here we can see the direct rays of the sun here it shows how the vertical rays are passing through a very smaller area of the atmosphere as a result they concentrated over a small area that is the heat is concentrated over a small area so the intensity becomes very high and that is why areas around the equator becomes very hot on the other hand away from the tropics due to the curvature of the earth the rays strike at lower angles the oblique or slanting rays of the sun pass through a larger area of the atmosphere and so it is spread over a larger area much heat is absorbed by the clouds dust particles and water vapor so oblique rays have less heating power this will get clearer as i explain this to you through this map that how the angle of the sun's rays varies according to the seasons the sun's rays are more direct in the summer season so temperatures are higher in the summer while the angle of incidence is lower during the winter so temperatures are lower during the winter here you can see that near the equator 10 degree north to 10 degree south the sun's direct rays are falling and hence this entire area is very very hot and comes under the tropical re region away from the tropical region beyond the 30 degree north to 60 degree north we find that the temperature is moderate because it is passing through a larger area of the atmosphere and these areas are known as the temperate regions they fall on either side of the 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude beyond that the angle of incidence is very low and these areas come under the polar zone apart from latitude altitude also plays a very important role the atmosphere mainly gets heated by terrestrial radiation the sun's energy is absorbed by the surface of the earth and radiated out in the form of long waves the denser lower layers containing more gas molecules water vapor 
and dust particles absorb terrestrial heat by conduction. On the higher level, the density of air decreases as the air is rarefied. Here we can see how the molecules of the air is far away from one another compared to the molecules which are found closer to the ground. So the heat radiated by the earth is escaped back to space owing to the rarity of the molecules. Consequently, the upper layers of the atmosphere becomes cool. This is the reason why the plains are warmer than the plateaus. Plateaus have a moderate climate and hill stations have cool climate. Very high mountains have snow-capped peaks. The average rate of decrease in temperature is 1 degree for every 165 meters of ascent in the troposphere and it is known as the normal lapse rate. So altitude plays a very important role in determining the temperature. As we go higher up, due to the rarity of the atmosphere, the absorbing power of the atmosphere becomes less and the temperature becomes cooler and cooler. Now we all know that land gets heated more quickly than water. And we also know that land cools more quickly than water because it gives out its heat very quickly. And this is mainly because of the low specific heat capacity of the land. Whereas water takes a longer time to get heated but it cools also very, very late. So during daytime, land gets heated faster than the surrounding water bodies. And at night, the land radiates the heat very quickly. This contrast is also observed in summer and winter. So the places located far away from the sea in the interior of the continents have a greater range of temperature. While places closer to the sea have a very moderating influence of the sea. So places like Gwalior, which is far away from the sea, suffers from extremes of temperature. That is, they are very hot, it is very hot during the summer and pretty cold during the winter. While Mumbai, which is very close to the sea, experiences an equable and maritime climate. Ocean currents. Ocean currents also play a very important role in determining the temperature of a place. Warm and cold ocean currents affect the coastal areas along which they flow. Warm ocean currents flowing from the equatorial areas to the polar areas tend to make the climate of the neighboring coastal areas warmer. While cold ocean currents, which come down from the polar areas, tend to decrease the temperature of the areas which are even in the tropical region. Here we can see that how the cold Labrador current, which is coming from the north, 
has a very cooling impact along the eastern coast of Canada. Because of this cold Labrador current, most of the ports over here remain ice bound for a longer period of time. On the other hand, the North Atlantic Drift, which is a warm current, ensures that even at a very high latitude, the areas around the Scandinavian mountains as well as parts of the British Isles remain warm even during the winters. In the same latitude, we find that the temperatures are very, very great, having a very great difference, mainly because of the presence of a warm current along the western coast of Europe and the presence of the cold current along the eastern coast of Canada. It has also been found that the effect of ocean current is more marked when winds blow from sea to land. The onshore winds blowing over a warm current pick up moisture and bring a lot of rain along the adjoining coastal areas. For example, the prevailing westerlies blow over sea to land and bring heavy rainfall on the western European coast throughout the year. On the other hand, winds that blow over a cold current cannot pick up moisture because they become dry. This is the reason why we have the Kalahari Desert and the Namib Desert along the southwestern part of Africa. It is mainly because of the presence of the cold Banguilla current. Winds blowing over here cannot pick up moisture and they become dry. As a result, all these areas experience a very, very dry climate and these areas have turned into a desert. Elsewhere we find that along the western coast of South America, due to the presence of the cold Humboldt or the Peruvian current, the Atacama Desert has been formed and it is the driest desert of the world. And it is all because of due to the presence of this cold current. Temperatures become very cold and winds which blow over here, even if they are onshore, they do not bring rainfall because they become dry when they blow over a cold current. So winds play a very important role in modifying the temperature of the region over which they blow. The cold winds blowing from a higher to lower latitudes reduce the temperature of the region where they blow. The northern part of China receive very cold winds from the central part of Asia during the winters when this area becomes very, very cold and turns into a high pressure zone. Winds begin to radiate from this area and since this, the winds are coming from a cold region, so all these areas of China, especially parts of western China, become very, very cold during the winters. Winds blowing from lower latitudes are warmer than winds which blow from the higher latitudes. The onshore winds reduce the 
summer temperatures and raise the winter temperatures in the coastal area. So here we can see the winds which are coming, which are on shore, that is it is moving towards the shore, bring moist air and are also responsible for reducing the temperature during the summer. In India, we find that the southwest monsoons, which come from the seas and ocean, pick up a lot of moisture from the Indian Ocean and drop them over the Indian subcontinent. However, when the same winds are moving from land to sea, they become generally dry winds. Local winds like the fawn, the chinook are hot local winds. The mistral, the bora are cold local winds. The loo which blows in parts of the Gangetic plain during the summer comes from Rajasthan, blows over western Uttar Pradesh in India, has a marked effect on the temperature in the areas over which it blows. Slope of the land also plays a very important and significant role in determining the temperature of the area. In the northern hemisphere, the south facing slopes are warmer than those of the north facing slope. Because the sun's rays strike the south facing slopes at a steeper angle. This however happens when mountains are aligned in an east-west direction. For example, that of the Himalayas. The great Himalayas which lie in an east-west alignment have their southern slopes more exposed to the sun while their northern slopes are less exposed and hence they remain sheltered away from the sun. The glaciers which are moving down southwards melt faster than those which are moving down northwards. In the southern hemisphere, northern slopes are more exposed to the sun than the southern slopes. This we can say of the Atlas Mountains which are having an east-west alignment. So in the southern hemisphere we find the north facing slopes of the Atlas Mountain to be hotter than those of the south facing slope. So today we learnt a great deal about the factors affecting the temperature. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.